What's going on everybody? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to another brake guide video. Today we'll be talking about the brake systems available on your G23 series, G22 4 series, and all of the G2X generation 2, 3, 4 series cars. I just want to start off this video by explaining that there's numerous options across multiple vehicles and the option codes do change from model to model, which makes this all incredibly confusing, but they are based around fairly standard sizes, so we hope to clear some of that up. It's okay to be confused, and quite frankly, it is very difficult to determine what brake system your car has without looking up by VIN. We do have a capability here at fcpero.com, by the way, uh, but we hope to at least demystify some of this as much as possible in this video. So by the end of it, it should be a little bit less confusing. So we have a handful of rotors and brake pads sitting here on the table just to kind of show you the variances. There's a whole bunch of different sizes by diameter, thicknesses, uh, surface features, no surface features. It starts to get incredibly nuanced, particularly as you start to move around from model to model because certain brakes are standard, others are optional, some are dealer installed. It gets kind of crazy. That said, the standard braking package on these cars is going to be your standard single piston front, single piston rear, floating caliper. It's gonna be 330 by 24 in the front, 330 by 20 in the rear. I don't know any other way to say that outside of that, it's a standard, fairly standard braking system. And that's exactly what we have on this 330i X-Drive and lift behind us. Moving along, we go to the M Sport brake option. And I, I don't necessarily like this terminology because M Sport, and performance, all these terms start to become very intermixed and confusing. You really have to just rely on the rotor sizes that are equipped on this car. But that said, the front rotor is gonna be 348 by 36 millimeter two piece. Uh, so that is a uh, aluminum hat that is riveted to the friction ring. So every single time I say two piece, that's just sort of an understood thing. Rear rotor is 345 by 24. The front brake caliper is gonna be a four piston uh, fixed caliper, could be blue or red. And again, this is where it starts to get kind of silly because the colors do change around. The rear caliper is a one piston floating caliper. And again, could be painted blue or red. Now we move into the motorsport engineering package or track package. Um, this brake package, for example, could be standard on certain models and optional on other ones. However, it is a 374 by 36 millimeter two piece rotor in the front and a 345 by 24 millimeter rotor in the back, again, two piece, and the front caliper is gonna be a four piston, blue or red, rear caliper, single piston floating, blue or red. Now, just to add an extra layer of why, uh, we have the M Performance brake package, which is very similar to the motorsport engineering package in terms of the specifics. Uh, the only thing that changes are the surface features on the rotor, so it's gonna be dimpled and slotted, that's gonna be 374 by 36 in the front, 345 by 24 in the rear, and the calipers are only going to be red. Four piston, fixed front, one piston floating rear, and that just generally covers all of the rotor sizes that are available on these cars. Again, um, I would say that you can measure the rotor to figure out what you have, but that's not necessarily a dead giveaway here. It's always easiest to decode what you have by VIN, uh, by the production code on the car. Um, do not rely on caliper colors or anything like that because again, just jumping from one package to the other, the caliper colors are the same or could be the same, but the rotor sizes change. So it's incredibly important to know what braking package your car has before ordering the brakes. We're gonna leave all of this sizing information in the description below, along with what pad size works for those different braking options that at least will give you some directionality. Uh, but I do want to talk about some of the rotors we have here sitting on the table. So for example, this is what I'm talking about when we're looking at a two-piece rotor. This hat right here is aluminum, and you can see the rivets here. Uh, this is physically attached to the friction ring via these rivets. Uh, BMW uses the design quite often on the larger brake rotors because it does reduce the weight, um, and it also helps with uh, the thermal aspect of it, uh, aluminum can dissipate heat a lot better. I will say though, these rotors are exceptionally heavy for a two-piece rotor. So if you pull one of these things out of the box, don't be surprised. This has got to weigh at least 25 pounds. 
shockingly heavy. And you can also see some of the differences just in the thickness of these rotors. So you have a uh, 330 by 24, so this would be a front rotor for one application. And this right here is a 345 by 36. And you can just see the amount of material that's available between these two. It's actually significant. Here's a rear rotor, the 330 by 20, so this would be on your standard brakes. Again, there's not a huge difference between these, but there's enough there where, again, if you just look at the front of the rotor, there's more to it just between the diameter and the actual width of the rotor. It gets, like I said, incredibly nuanced on these cars. So if you're trying to figure out what brakes you need and you're confused, totally normal because BMW made this unfortunately very, very complicated. Now we did talk about the brake rotors, but I do want to take a quick second to talk about brake pads. And again, why it's important to know which option code your car has, uh, because looking at some of these brake pads, they might look the same, but they are not. So we'll talk about the brake pads really quick, particularly on the fronts, and then uh, we'll show you some stuff on the car. So these brake pads right here, they look very much the same. They're the same general shape. Uh, dimensionally, they are far from being the same. If I were to put both of them down on the table, you can see there is a height difference there. So again, you know, if you're just strictly looking at visual cues, like if you have a brake pad that looks like this, they must all be the same. No, it's not how it works. Unfortunately, wish it was that simple, but uh, this right here is going to be for the motorsport engineering package or the M-Performance brake upgrades. So that'll be for the 374 size rotor. And then this is for the 345 millimeter factory M Sport brake. Um, again, the way that these sit on the rotor, there's a little bit of overhang uh, on the bottom side. It's not uncommon to see these rotors develop a little bit of a lip as the brake pads wear down. Uh, so typically you're gonna be replacing the brake pads and the brake rotors at the same time, unless you choose to machine your rotor, um, which would only be doable with the rotor blanks, you wouldn't be able to do that with the rotors that have a surface feature on them. Once you see a lip, once you wear the pad, you're gonna be replacing the rotors at the same time. And then the standard style front rotor or front brake package is this style right here, which is pretty traditional for a floating style caliper. Um, but again, that's only gonna be on your 330 millimeter size front brake package, and that's gonna be the single piston brake. So if you see brakes like this, you have the base brake package. If you see brake pads like this, you're gonna to wanna to be careful about which specific pads that you need based on what rotor size you have, and also what caliper too, because the caliper does change size along with it. So again, you just have to know what option code you have before you start buying the stuff. But that said, I'm gonna show you a couple of things on the car that we don't have on the table, things to be aware of, things to take note of at, with during the ownership of these cars and things you're gonna to need to replace. All right, so we said we're gonna talk about a couple of things on this car. Um, other parts that weren't on the table that you should be aware of. Uh, this has the standard brake package, so this is a 330 by 24 front, 330 by 20 rear, single piston floating front, single piston floating rear. The G2X chassis cars is a beginning of a pretty large departure from the brake systems that you would have typically seen on many other BMWs. So starting here with the front caliper, it's a floating caliper, uh, but instead of it having rubber guide pin bushings, uh, the guide pins physically come into the caliper bracket itself. And what you need to know about this type of design is this is heavily reliant on lubrication. Traditionally, you would minimize the use of lubrication on guide pins, particularly when they go through a guide pin bushing. But in this car, the only thing that prevents these calipers from getting stuck is the lubrication that is on the pin inside the bracket. And the only thing that keeps the moisture and contamination out is these little rubber boots. So when you're doing a brake service on one of these cars, two things. Number one, you need to use a silicone-based lube. Silicone paste is usually the best option, but any kind of synthetic type of lubricant is going to be mostly okay. And you also wanna make sure that these little rubber boots are in good condition, that they're still intact. And you need to make sure that the guide pins are floating freely. If you find that they are stuck, you're essentially gonna be replacing the caliper bracket at that point, uh, because usually once you start to see a buildup of corrosion in here, um, 
the guide pin will no longer fit the bracket correctly. And if you do manage to clean it out and that little bit of slop could cause other problems too. So this is a very common style floating brake caliper assembly from many other makes, but a pretty large departure from what you've typically seen on most BMW single piston floating brake caliper systems. That said, um, other things you need to be aware of too, things like your brake hoses. These are a wear item. They often go unreplaced when they should be replaced. And a brake hose uh, over time could start to become restricted internally. So basically the inner diameter starts to close up. It is possible for these brake hoses to collapse internally where brake pressure uh, will go by, but it can't be released. It almost like acts like a check valve. A mistake that a lot of people will make too is you might replace a single brake hose and not replace one on the other side. You should always be replacing brake hoses in pairs. Never do one on their own because you really don't know what that brake hose looks like internally. And you could cause a situation where one side has more braking ability than the other. So you'll have unequal braking. So always replace these in pairs. I would say, quite frankly, replacing one, just replace all four brand new ones. Not really worth the cost savings on that front. The junction lines for the brake hose at the hard line, sometimes those can be seized. If you are rotating the uh, nut on the hard line and you see that the hard line is moving with it, you might have a situation where some corrosion is built up under there and it's not able to move freely. You could potentially use a little bit of heat there, uh, but you do have to be careful not to twist the hard line and break it off. If you do that, your problems have gotten a lot more difficult. Same thing, these bleeder screws on the calipers, they could be stuck with age two. Um, I think it is worth occasionally moving them around, uh, you know, once a year, make sure they don't seize and you should be fine past that. But again, you break off the bleeder screw, that's not as much of a problem. You just won't be able to bleed the uh, brake caliper at that corner. If you do break off the bleeder screw from the caliper, that is not as much of a safety issue because it's not gonna let any fluid come out. Uh, but removing what's left of the bleeder screw inside the caliper is really a difficult job. You may not be able to do it without creating additional damage. So chances are if that happens, you're gonna be replacing the caliper anyway. Uh, but that's pretty much it on the front. There isn't really too much to speak of here outside of the fact that this is a different caliper design than what you would have seen on other BMWs. If you've owned one before, just make sure that those guide pins are floating freely and you'll be fine. Now let's move to the back and that's where we really do need to talk about a major departure. Most of the BMWs are moving this way, but it's the first time you've seen this on a two, three or four series. Now we're moving to the rear brakes and this is where there's more commonality amongst all the different braking package than there isn't. The only thing that is going to change is obviously the rotor size, uh, but they all use a single piston floating rear brake caliper, regardless of whether you have the big fancy brakes. And there's one reason for that. The large departure on this car from every other three series or two series or four series that's ever existed is it has an electronic rear parking brake. So you have an electric motor on the brake caliper and that is responsible for moving the brake pad into contact with the brake rotor when you pull the little button inside the car. So there's no more mechanic, uh, mechanical situation going on inside the rotor hub, the parking brake cable, all that is gone, which on one level that's much simpler. However, it gets a little bit more complicated uh, because you do need to put the brakes into a service mode to push the piston back in. You can do that with a scan tool uh, but, or I guess technically you can unplug it and put voltage to the motor, but you have to know which pin to do that with. And you do need to be careful while you're doing that too, or remove the motor and manually unwind it. There's obviously tricks out there. We're always going to err on the side of caution and say, do it the scan tool method between retracting and resetting, uh, because at the very least the car will know, Hey, this is where the brake pad is. This is where it needs to be, uh, because it does keep track of those things. That said, very similar to the front. Uh, because this is always gonna be a single piston floating caliper, you do have the same setup where the guide pin comes into the caliper uh, carrier, and you do need to be aware of that any kind of corrosion in there could cause a bunch of problems. So always make sure that the dust boots are in good shape, make sure that these pins are properly lubricated, and you should be good to go without any concerns. Make sure you place your brake hoses in matched pairs. This side, we do have our pad wear sensor, so it clicks into the brake pad, and you do have to trace this cable. It's kind of a pain on the rear because it does attach itself 
two suspension components and you have to trace it all the way up to your e-box. So for example, right here, you do have your wheel speed sensor that comes to a different box on these cars, which is kind of annoying. It'd be nice if they went to the same place, but that just is what it is. Um, and again, your uh, wheel speed sensor, the magnetic pickup is inside the wheel bearing. So a bad wheel bearing on these cars can cause an ABS fault, something to be aware of. Similarly, any kind of debris that gets stuck inside of that housing there could cause a problem as well. So something to be aware of. The past that is a very similar braking system to the front, at least on this car because of the single piston floating um, caliper setup. Uh, and when you're servicing these, obviously because you can't move the wheel around like you can, or the, can't move it around like you can in the front, it's a little bit less space to work with. Um, but past that, very simple braking system, particularly in the rear, regardless of which braking packs you have, because they're all pretty much the same, just changes based on rotor size. And of course, like I said, when you need to service these brakes, you do have to retract that parking brake motor. How you do that is up to you. Again, we're always gonna tell you to do it with the scan tool to remove the possibility of a mistake or an error. Other than that, very simple. Anyway, I hope this video helped explain all of the variations of the brake packages that these cars can come with. It is confusing, there is a lot going on there, but at least being aware that there are different sizes can help you during the ordering process if you're planning on doing this yourself or buying the parts for somebody else to do the install for you. Nothing worse than buying brake parts and not having to be the right ones for your car. So just being aware that there are differences can help in the forefront. That said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit the like button. And of course, you wanna hit subscribe. We have a lot of content coming out about the G2X generation of two, three, and four series. As always, we'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching.